Welcome back, everybody, to the TO desk. It has been a while, but I'm so glad to be back here uh, with the rest of the 956 crew uh, on another episode. And we're back after some big news. We've had our heads down for a little while working on uh, our big announcements for our next uh, tournament. In fact, our first offline tournament uh, under the Vortex Gallery series. And... Um, we're here to talk a little bit about that. We've never really done a show after the announcement just to kind of recap and to, to set our own expectations and kind of talk about uh, what we're looking forward to. So th th we thought that'd be a nice thing to do. We also have some really nice uh, updates on what we're going to be doing for online in the future, right? So, you know, you think we're, we're just going to leave a one show a year? Get out of here. Uh, so really looking forward to sharing some of that and uh, just to kind of walk everyone who maybe is not too familiar with the process, walk them through how how we run these things, how we make things like Vortex Gallery happen and how we're going to be showing up at Evo this year. Uh, I'm your host as always, Shib. And Corin, how are you doing? Doing great. That's great. And uh, Daryl, DJ Cream. Yeah, doing good over here. You know, I heard this DJ Cream guy showed up on a, um, what's it called, like a like a um, volunteer list for like chaos code or something like that. Who is this guy? DJ who? That's crazy. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll, I'll which... get into it. I'll get into that. Um, to that info later. Oh yeah. No spoilers. We'll, we'll, we'll talk no about it. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Oh, and uh, Terry, Hagare, how you doing? Chilling, man. Got my head down working hard on this stuff. That's good. Uh, Kumabo, how goes your evening? Terrible. No, it's been fine mostly. Uh, is that is it working hard or hardly working or is it both? All right, understandable. Numaki, how's it been? I'm doing okay. Jogged three miles, touched some grass, and got a brace by embraced by gra a grass. It was pretty cool. Great. Yeah. Uh, we're all coming through after a busy day to make this show happen, but um, we really wanted to get a um post post announcement show out there to talk about our big change uh of our presence at evo right so if you know us from our previous uh over five years of attendance as animevo then uh we're here again this year working at an even bigger capacity under the vortex gallery label uh to bring community tournaments to you at evo 2022 uh, this announcement obviously was really big news for us and represents a really big opportunity for growth, not only for the people that we work with for ourselves, but also the community as a whole who attends Evo every year because um, we're, we're, we're getting a lot more to work with, right? And we're able to expand our audience in a way that I don't think we really en envision doing. Uh, but having that project in front of us, it, it just totally makes sense for us. Um, so, you know, that's a lot of talk. Uh, I would like to go over how this works, right? For if you're maybe not familiar, maybe you're just getting into the FGC in the past few years, but you like the idea of what we're talking about. So just want to, want to walk that through and I'm going to give it over to Terry. Terry, can, can you explain, you know, like we're five, what, what is it? What, what are we doing this year? All right. Yeah. So for the few of you who may not know what Evo is, Evo is basically the largest FGC tournament in the world. And, um, you know, it happens, well, before the pandemic, of course. Uh, it happened yearly every summer uh, in Las Vegas. It originally started as a West Coast event, but, you know, decades later, here we are. We, we got the biggest event in Vegas. So they usually run every year. It's nine games that they choose to run. So, yeah, if you can head over to evo.gg to check out what they're running, right? But, yeah, you know, that's only nine games. You know, there's a lot more games in the FGC. So that's where we step in. That's where Vortex Gallery is doing. So Evo is usually a three-day event. It runs Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, where Sunday is like kind of the finals. But for us, uh, Vortex Gallery will be running on that Friday and Saturday. So the, the two main tournament days, right? And we'll basically be helping folks run every kind of side game that you'll see at Evo. So, you know, of course, you'll have your, like, typical standbys, like any of the games that were really close to making the Evo lineup, but didn't really, like, say... Say Undernight? Undernight. There we go. Uni, right? Oh, man. That that's that hurts. Mm. 2020 was our year, y'all. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Uni. Um, you know, old classic standbys, like Super Turbo. Some random games, like Kianta 2, right? Ultra Fight the Kianta 2. 
Um, so basically anything and everything that people want to run as a side game at Evo, like boom, we're hosted it. So in the past, we were kind of, I mean, DJ Kareem could speak on this a little bit more as originator. But, you know, we started off running a few games, um, like kind of, you know, quote unquote poverty games. And um, up until 2019, the, la- the last time Evo was in person, I believe we ran 31 games under our label. Um, back then we were called Anime Evo. Since then, we've since uh, rebranded to Vortex Gallery. But yeah, uh, here we are in 2022. And not only are we running a bunch of side games at Evo, We are literally in charge of running all of the side games at Evo. So um, in the past, uh, you know, uh, communities like ST, CVS2, Marvel2, like they would do their own thing, uh, run their own side tournaments and stuff. But, you know, with uh, the Hado uh, taking over Evo this time, uh, he wanted to make sure that the... Because, you know, in previous years, like, I mean, anyone here on this podcast can tell you, like, how hectic it is to schedule the side stage area. It was, it's, it's a mad dash to like, you know, get your setups in place, uh, schedule times around other games and stuff like that. So that's kind of where we stepped in originally. And uh, the Hodo uh, noticed that, you know, he, he noticed the work that we were doing and he wanted the community tournaments and stuff to grow and um, be better overall. And so he saw the work we did. He says, yo, bet, you know, and just do it major this time uh, help run everything but also you know under us we can really uh, take the organizations that we did you know for a lot of the tournaments that we've done before and apply to every side tournament at evo so um i'm really looking forward to it it'll be a lot of work uh, but um uh, it'll be a lot of fun too because you know even in the past right you know like with st for myself you know i normally well i used to run vsav so, you know, I was out there getting CRT super guns and stuff. So I would work, you know, pretty closely with the ST folks anyways, um, even though they weren't running under, you know, Vortex Gallery, I would, I would be working with them anyways. So um, it's just kind of more of the same, basically. Um, and we'll be working a little bit closer with each other. So I guess the main thing that I really want to stress is that, yes, we are running all of the side tournaments. So if there are any TOs uh, out there who is looking to run something on the side and you haven't worked with us in the past, uh, definitely hit up that that volunteer form. Um, and a lot of y'all have. I know um, folks from the CVS2 community, Marvel2 community, everybody who's looking to run something, hit us up with the volunteer form. And then, like, I know a lot of y'all TOs out there who are used to this and who haven't worked with us. Like, it's not going to be that much different. You know, like, we we pretty much know, you know, the usual folks who be running stuff. So it'll just be more like kind of like, uh, you know, what's good? Uh, is there anything we can do to help y'all? And if not, um, yeah, you know, we'll we'll let it rock. But, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll swing it over to uh, DJ Cream right now. He could give you a little bit more backstory and um, also talk a little bit about what we're looking for um, in terms of side tournaments. All right. Uh, yeah. So this is where I'll step in. So basically, um, what Hagre mentioned is it's pretty much true. So um, in summation, uh, uh, 956 Pro is pretty much in charge of like the community tournament area. So as far as I'm aware, like in the past, this used to like take up so much of like the bring your own console area for. And honestly, in previous years, it was really tough getting like casual games in. So now that we kind of like earmarked our own, like, you know, a little territory, we could run tournaments and also um, have casuals elsewhere at Evo. So that's going to be one of our big things that we're going to be looking forward to this year. So uh, if you want to get like casual games in of like Catherine or Street Fighter 4 or Guilty Gear, there's going to be a place nearby that will facilitate those kind of like, you know, casual like games. But, you know, we're 956. We're, we're mostly about the community ran tournaments so this is gonna be our first year doing it in person under 956 but in years past it was pretty much hey who's going to evo who wants to run a tournament at evo and then we all kind of like collaborate share information and like talk to one another and see if we could fulfill everybody's needs to um you know do these tournaments um a lot of times it's really easy uh, just show up with like with one or two setups, and you know you're you're pretty much go to, you're pretty much ready to go to run your tournament at Evo. 
this year it's going to be a lot more interesting just because there's so, there's so many people who've like taken up so many different fighting games this past like two years without having the the need to be like oh i'm obligated to play like street fighter or tekken because all the cool kids are doing it now it's like people are coming coming off like fight k be like oh i tried like i don't know garo or vampire hunter or whatever and now i want to go try to play it like in a like in an in-person setting so this is where some new up-and-coming tikios can you know get a hold of us um sign up on our volunteer sheet and we can help uh, make whatever tournament you feel like running how um, happen at evo yeah man if you want to show up and play gundam federation versus zeon uh you know if you somehow have four super guns for you know that game then come on down but realistically i know there's a lot of things people want to see at evo a lot of anime stuff in particular. People already joked about, how oh, you know, this is the evil year of anime. Like, there's just so much more anime now, <laughs> even compared yeah. to that. Yeah. Like, bro, that... like, 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 literally, the first year we ran anime Evo, I was like, all right, cool. There's like only three or four games to really keep tabs on, and then like over the years, like people have like, like people, like players, or even like developers, they're just like, hey, we got this cool indie game to like, you know, really show off at evo and then like every year we get more and more people like entering like signing up to to run tournaments for like all these got like all these games some of them i haven't even heard of until like uh until i see the volunteer sheets so, like oh there's a there's a scene for this y'all bet let's let's make it happen at evo yeah i think i echo the sentiment that some people were saying on twitter just to go back to undernight west coast majors for anime not a thing right now um uh, but we would like to start making I mean, it a west thing coast majors Right. Yeah, right. yeah, I mean, in we general, right? Those like, a while. like, I mean, you know, you're well served by Evo, maybe, right? But if you're playing, you know, a lot of the other stuff out there, maybe you don't really have a big event to look forward to. Or maybe the big event that you look forward to right now is like on the other side of the, you know, the US over at CEO, for example, right? Things like that. So having something close to home for that part of the scene, I think is going to be really important. And that's, that is like something that I can say, but I need, you know, we need people to step up and help us make that happen. Right. So if you're, you know, a local organizer playing under night, if you're a local organizer playing blaze blue, if you're playing exert, if you're playing, you know, Axe and core, whatever it is, come on down, hit up the form, you know, 956 pro.com slash volunteer. In case you didn't know, that's the volunteer form sign up yeah, there. Slightly, slightly unrelated like we're definitely in the midst of like a paradigm shift of like you know a lot of the og heads like to heads are like have taken this past couple of years to like really reflect and be like uh can, can i do i still have the energy to keep doing these tournaments right right now so a, yeah, a yeah. lot of people have kind of like stepped back and like said hey you know what we're gonna let these newer tos you know handle business pretty much passing the torch on to another generation so like if if you've been holding if you've been hosting like weekly online events you know you're the type of person that we really want to talk to because if you're going to show up to evo especially if this is like your first or like second like time to go to evo like this this is this is where you can like you know network with more people like more people more players more tos and we can really make that tournament happen like at pretty much like the biggest tournament in the world so you know if you're also i just i, I also want to encourage anyone who you know really likes like very niche poverty slash obscure games like please submit your you know weird tournament idea like if you can make it happen like your super nintendo fighters your new indie pc games your you know old versions of fighting games like just stuff that does not come up in the discussion very often like please you know what nothing would make me yeah, happier than to fill like hundreds of square feet of of an evil floor right because that's not a cheap venue uh and fill it with like the craziest you know most obscure stuff imaginable nothing would bring me more joy so help me out with that um i've certainly done my part to try to encourage people uh in circles and uh, we've seen a couple people come through with a couple of things that I'm really happy about. But I, I really want to see, especially a lot of these games that, like uh, Daryl mentioned, is a lot of these games that got popularity online, like to make that jump, right? Somebody to show up and, and help us build an offline presence. Yeah, I bet, man. Like, I know one game I'm really looking forward to making a return to our lineup is Akatsuki BlitzConf. 
um, which has you know seen a lot more action these days ever since uh, it got rolled back on Fightcade. And man, I love that game, yo. I want, I want, I want to slash people with Fritz, right? Um, really hoping somebody steps up for that game. Uh, we ran it once, I think, like six or seven years ago, or or I don't know, maybe I less than ran, that. But... No, no, we ran it pretty recently. Yeah, at 2019. Oh yeah, I remember, maybe that was like the year where like. That, that was like the Seven. year where I randomly roomed up with like three or four different East Soldat players. I was like, why is this Yeah, a thing? they were playing mirrors for days, man. Oh, like man. Four hours um, of just East Soldat mirrors. But yeah, right. I mean, and that's the other thing, too, for those that don't know. Like, uh, it doesn't just have to be fighting games, right? Like, we run Catherine tournaments. We Kuyo run Tetris is also Kuyo Tetris tournament. Yeah, shout out to Kiyobi. If it's a competitive game and you can make a tournament out of it, bet. Like we, yeah, you, you know, we might want to like have a dialogue with like the actual Evo folks to see if we can actually like make some sort of like DDR tournament happen. Because I know oh, one God. year somebody submitted oh, that idea yeah. to us, but like, mm -hmm. yeah, that Evo didn't happen that year. But I would be super mm -hmm. interested to see how we can make this sort like some something related to like the arcade happen right yeah exactly like yeah. so i mean if if you build it like that's the thing about evo right evo like i said earlier is the biggest fighting game you know tournament in the world it's the biggest open bracket tournament period in the world right so you got people coming from all over you know people who aren't even fighting game people you know people who just want to be a part of the show and so like if you build a tournament like if you run something like you're gonna get some kind of entrance there you know like you're gonna have um somebody like come by and be like yo what's that you know and get interested take a look and you know maybe you got yourself some new players you know you can help grow and build your scene so that's something i'm really looking forward to to see what kind of people come through and uh you know make this happen again like ship said the volunteer form is at 956pro.com slash volunteer and um we're also not just looking for tos historically we stream pretty much most if not every one of our tournaments too so you know it, it takes a village to make these kinds of events happen so you know we're looking for you know lee tos streamers you know people who can help out be bracket runners people who can help you know manage people for stage like all kinds of assistance is needed for this event so like you know even if maybe you're like i don't know if i'm ready to you know be the lee to for a game sign up and maybe run brackets for a game that you love you know, or a community that you're really passionate about. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to help out. Um, and, you know, you can all check it out uh, through that volunteer form again. So um, definitely, yeah, please. Like, I don't want to leak too many things right now, what we've seen. But we definitely have uh, some cool games that are making another return. Um, we have a few new games, too. And we also have a lot of games that, uh, kind of like I was saying before, that maybe have a streamer but don't have a lead TO. Or, you know, maybe have like a people who are running to run, willing to run brackets, but doesn't have anybody who, you know, really wants to, you know, take the charge and lead it, right? Um, and that's part of what we do, is that we take, we do this application process so we can connect folks and, you know, connect communities and stuff to make sure that we get these events happening and rocking. Um, because running an event at EVO, it can, it can be a little hard, right? If you've never been, if you've been to EVO, you know what I'm talking about. The scale of EVO is like nothing else in the FGC, right? If you haven't been to EVO, I always tell people, you got to go at least once. If, if you're a fan of the FGC, like if you're a fan of these fighting games, everybody should go to EVO at least once, you know, to check it out because... It's, it's just different. It's Yeah, it's just different. It is literally built different, especially this year. I know the Hado has been working really hard, tirelessly, to really take a lot of the things that were kind of like you know complaints about evil in the past <clears throat> water <clears throat> you know and make them happen this year right and um that's that goes throughout the whole event he's really taking a hard look at what he can do to improve the experience for everybody and i'm really looking forward to it so you know if you haven't gone to evo before or maybe you haven't you've went before and you know you kind of like ah, i don't want to go anymore i would say this is a good year to return and make that comeback because yeah, th this year is going to be popping. Like, it is going to be crazy. Like, um, you, we already saw during the Evo kind of announcement that they had, um, the scale that we're talking about. Like, the scale is so much bigger than it was before. Yeah, I'm just really excited to see not only what we're doing, um, but as Evo as a whole, too.
yeah if, if i if i can be real like before i kind of got like an idea of what the hado's vision was for evo this year i wasn't really all that enthused about coming back to evo myself but no they, they're planning some big things and i'm excited for it yeah and uh somebody needs to show up and see me in gundam wing uh and the stool for the super nintendo because i'm not trying to run that on fightcade right now but if somebody right, i got i got my me, mr bet bet all right oh you uh, got the mr oh yo yo okay all right also I'll yeah, briefly, yeah, like, them. i, I want to yeah you do <laughs> yeah you do uh we we're not going to talk about corin's stash of uh fpgas because he might somebody might break into his house if we disclose too much information <laughs> oh, man. uh, also uh just to address if you're watching this show if and you saw the ghost of catherine past in in the overlay no you didn't you didn't see that um uh, didn't exist Ka- catherine will <laughs> pay no attention yeah, to the me. man behind the curtain yeah I heard all that shit we, <laughs> we, were we invoked his name right <laughs> <laughs> we will um promise you puzzle action at a later date but yeah i just want to reiterate that we were looking for anything and everyone. I think Terry really nailed it on the head with Evo, with the scale that Evo is. If you build it, they will come, right? So don't be afraid if you're looking at a you know a game that maybe doesn't get a lot of attention around you, but you really have a passion for it and you have the logistics to make it happen. Then make it happen. Don't don't think about that. Just you know, not not only will it give people a reason to look at it that it's going to be at Evo, right? Because it kind of builds some expectations, but also just being there, so many people that you wouldn't reach will suddenly be there to take part in the experience. And with the expanded BYOC this year, like the dedicated BYOC this year, that that is something that I guess we kind of touched on, but maybe didn't explain. uh, That, yeah, there will be a dedicated BYOC this year, as explained in several of Evo's announcements. Uh, We are not operating in that space. So that will be a boon even for us because first we have more space, but also the ability to play these games casually and to get a closer experience with them will not necessarily be relegated to, oh, you know, where's the suite where people are playing this game? You know, what, where, where's the room where, you know, they're running sets for this or that, which is, you know, normal, right, for, for yeah. FGC majors. But it's also nice that if you're, you know, if you don't know anything about that, you're you're just showing up. You know, you're here for a day. You got your day pass. You're here. Uh, you will have the ability to not only compete but to enjoy, right, and uh, connect with the community. Yeah, definitely. That was something I always low key felt kind of bad about. As you know, as we grew, we started like running more and more tournaments, and like yeah, basically the space available for people to actually run, you know, just casual setups and stuff basically disappeared after like our second year of doing stuff um just because we were running so many tournaments which you know is is dope but sometimes having casuals is some of the most fun parts of being at an event right so i'm really happy to see the hodo you know really took that that criticism to heart and was like all right bet you know we're gonna have a side tournament area strictly for side tournaments right so y'all can do 956p y'all can do what you want to do there But we're also going to have all these actual casual setups where everything, you know, this area is for casual setups. So so for people who want to run casuals, you know, maybe they want to run some money matches or something on the side. I don't know if that's, you know, or not money matches, a friendly, you know, friend, I don't know. I want to run a tournament today. We we call them exhibitions, okay? Yeah, they're exhibitions. Yeah, exhibitions. Yeah, all right, whatever. Not money matches, right? I'm a Marvel (laughs) team. Come on. Um, Yeah, you know, there'll be an area to do that. So I'm really happy to see that this year. And um, not only that, I'm just, I'm really happy that we're, you know, for the side tournament space, we're getting a lot more space that we have in the past. So all y'all TOs from Evo's past, like, y'all know how kind of cramped it could get in there. Um, but yeah, no more of that. So I'm looking forward to growing and um, doing things bigger and better than we ever have before. So yeah, I guess uh, one thing I do want to iterate though, um, for those of who know how we've done things in the past, uh, you know, we open up our signups, you know, we let folks come in, we try to figure out, all right, who's actually committed, you know, who is going to be going and running tournaments there. So, you know, we figure that out for a few weeks and then we drop our first lineup of games. We're like, all right, bet we've gone through these applications. 
And these are the games that we know for sure are happening. Please enjoy, right? So we're planning to do that this time. Uh, probably we're going to have signups open until May 20th. Yes. For that first lineup of games. So um, yeah, I highly, highly, highly encourage folks to, if you are like sure you're trying to run something at EVO, get those volunteer forms in with you and all of your crew. Like any crew that's helping you out to run this stuff, Make sure they get their volunteer applications in too. Because, yeah, when it comes down to it, we'd like to see tournaments that are run by a few people, right? Because it's always nice to have your homies who can help back you up when stuff stuff starts getting hectic, right? Especially if you're streaming and running a tournament or if your tournaments, you're expected to be like 64 people, 128 people, stuff like that. Uh, so definitely get your crew in there too to sign up with these applications. Yeah, volunteers also includes commentators. You know, we're always looking for commentators for a lot of these games. So, you know, definitely if you have a game that you love uh, that you want to commentate for, you know, hit up that volunteer form. If you're a newer commentator, uh, these events are a great way. St stretch your wings out, get, get some mic time. And that goes for streaming, too. A lot of the streamers that we had, I mean, Numakia knows himself, but a lot of the streamers who stream events at EVO, that's where they start their streaming careers, right? Like, because it's EVO, everybody's eyes are on evo and they're just you know of course there's the main evo streams right but people are looking for anything related to evo there so it's super like if you're trying to uh, get to that next you know tier of you know streaming partnership uh streaming at evo is a great way to do it like you know if you're just starting and you don't have affiliate like no problem at all yeah, um, we'll get there we'll even give you some pointers as well you know because just setting up a stream setup on like on the floor is kind of its own beast. Own challenge. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, commentators, streamers, uh, yeah, head on through. Um, you know, there's a lot of games out there that, you know, make POs and stuff, uh, but they don't have a streamer. You know, and that's part of what we do, again, is connect the community to each other and we all help each other out. Right. Yeah, I was about to say that, where you don't have to bring a whole... Like if you're applying to run a game, you don't have to have all like it's if you do, it's great. Where if you have say, I want this person to stream it, I want these people to commentate it, I'm gonna have these people to help racket run it. We ideally we you should have at least one or minimum not ideally, but a minimum at least one other person involved, even if they're just kind of your gopher. Like if it's a small bracket, like if like if I was running Aquapaza, I could probably do that by myself. I mean it's only gonna be like I think the biggest has ever been is about 30 people. Hey, man. But each and every time you run off of Plaza, like I'd be there to stream it. So. At max? Yeah, the first year we ran it, I think it's like 36. But, you it know, it's like you world. want somebody else just in case. It's like, well, if you're playing in a tournament and someone else is, hand, you know, and then somebody else wants to report a match, or if you need to go to the bathroom, you know, just have somebody to be able to, like, not have everything explode while you're gone for five minutes. Mm -hmm. To or, have some know, backup. You're, you're running a tournament, and one of your playing like street fighter 5 on the other side of the venue right yeah. you can have somebody who can be like okay you know go go over there tell them to come in or they'll be dq yeah go like chase that. down justin wong or goichi or something because they're yeah. in a half or vicky game. viper Under <laughs> mm. game mostly vicky viper <laughs> mostly vicky viper okay yeah one thing i want to mention about like actually going to the venue that most people don't think about is actually lugging your equipment to the venue itself I remember back in 2014 when it was just like Anime Evo was its inception. The general idea was you lug your equipment through the front door, hopefully did not get stopped. <laughs> and then, you know, you just take over like tables at the BYOC area, you know, kind of prayed that the people didn't like kick you out or something. I remember that was one of the biggest concerns of, of, yeah. of, of like us running stuff back in the day. Especially those early, yeah. those, this early days, like security was a little bit more lax than it, than it was it is now. Because like if you looked like you were like in a rush or busy or like even looked like someone like a developer or something carrying like a big box, mm -hmm. they'll let you through the door. It was kind of wild. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. And it was there's also yeah. just less organization in general. So when the floor would open, it was just like we didn't have reservation. Like we weren't coordinating with Evo at all, like in any capacity. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had our concern was we had to get there and make sure we had enough space to run these events in the first place because if like say like the smash players rolled through and grabbed three rows of tables for their melee setups it was just like well rip yeah yeah man. i definitely yeah. talked to all my contacts who were like 
on the show floor to like say, hey, can you sneak me in so I can do like recon or like where the BYOC is and stuff you like that. You were the first person to walk in to make sure that we can actually move our stuff there. I remember that now. Oh, back in 2014, that was hilarious. Where can we set up? Yeah. Okay. Are there screens there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all, all that stuff was not guaranteed, especially in those early years. So like, mm-hmm. now that we're coordinating with Eva, we're much more prepared to like delegate certain tables and equipment and stuff like that no for sure and i'm like i just remember every single like every single year it was just improvements and improvements like into that that general design you mentioned about in 2017 we actually start to even coordinate with evo a little bit mm. i i just like i just want to actually point out in 2019 when we actually were more or less working with evo in a more in a bit of a Unof- like, is it kind of unofficial, or what do you say? Yeah, I mean, we don't, we weren't. They open up their applications, right, for Psy tournaments and space. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, that, I want to say that was 2018, the first yeah. time they did that. Mm-hmm. So for 2019, you know, they opened up the applications and we applied there. Mm-hmm. Um, but we got to talk to them at least a little bit before to kind of coordinate, you know, tell them, like, okay, you know, like, we're running this game, you know, um separately from this game because you know there's a lot of conflicts between players and stuff um yeah so it was just a little bit but uh this year will definitely be i mean very different because you know we're running it all you know we're talking with evo um and i think that's one of the again like for for those of y'all who who don't know like what we do that's a big part of it you know the when it comes to like equipment and consoles and stuff like that um, one of the main reasons that we started doing this was to kind of coordinate with each other, right? Like a lot of the games are on the same consoles, are on the same platform. So instead mm-hmm. of everybody bringing, you know, like their own PS3s for their own tournaments, and then another tournament can use those same three PS3s later on or something like that, you know? So yeah, that was I one was... of the main reasons we started doing this. I'll actually actually like mention uh, like the VSAP tournament in 2019. One of the biggest things was not only me setting up my stream, all my stream equipment, you know, like the mixers, the PC, the, the multiple mm-hmm. screens, my mixer and whatnot, and you setting up all your CRTs and the VSAP cabinet and us being close enough so I can actually capture the capture the, like the VSAP equipment. That's probably like a good example of, you know, the amount of actual coordination to show off well one the game and two just the game the stream the game to show off to everybody you know a lot of that a lot of the coordination between tos and gamers or like are is something that gets worked out uh, worked out within this little organization that we kind of made up over time you know yeah and i mean that that's why um you know we were entrusted with uh running all of the side events at evos because we were doing these things already, you know, just for our own sanity, right? Yeah, and, for sure. Um, yeah, we're, I mean, like, again, uh, like, I was, you know, with the VSAF tournament, I was working with the the people who ran ST because we were sharing equipment. Um, they, I think they used my super gun one year, and then I, like, used some of their CRTs, um, you know, and they weren't a part of, uh, you know, our event officially, but we were already talking just because, you know, I mean, CRTs, right? Like, <laughs> ain't nobody trying to lug too many crts yeah, to be um, fair they have was... to. yeah well, because like yeah because again just we we just work so closely with them we're sharing equipment you know we, we talk about our scheduling right like because we didn't want to run vsav and st at the same time because mm-hmm. there's a lot of crossover between players so yeah, you know i was sure. uh who was it atari was running it that year yeah. uh, so i was working with him so exactly. uh, and, you know, yeah. so we're just taking it to you know we're taking those kind of things those kind of our relationships and planning um and we're taking it to the next level well with everybody who's running a side event at evo yeah i'm just i'm actually just excited at the fact that you know we're actually doing it on an actual official level you know that's that's the most surprising part for me and one of the things that i'm totally looking forward to working this event you know it's like from 2002, working behind the scenes, sneaking in to 2019 when we're <laughs> yeah. just like, okay, okay, we, we can we can talk a little bit, you know, and and to now where we're just like, hey, man, we have a word, <laughs> like we have a word in, you know, what we want to do and work together. That is, that is an evolution of sorts that, that I don't know, I just. Uh, yeah, Numaki is like you know? one of the first people I like contacted to like actually help me out with like doing like starting to do all these like side tournament stuff way before even like setting up the anime evil brand is like i i know like i've known numaki as like a multi-mode player like and a streamer at like 
around what 2012 13 14 and it was like he was one of the first people to see like the the, the beginnings of anime evo and then like along with some of us was like mm-hmm. been here since day one seeing the evolution of like how we set all this up and somehow maintain our sanity throughout mm-hmm. the two th- the <laughs> two day two day weekend <laughs> hey he was responsible for streaming most of the games at uh what the first year of 2014 uh melty blood I kind of heart Aquapaza, Chaos Code, and JoJo's yeah. five games, yeah. two days, uh, kind of crazy. Yeah. Other mentions I like to say is Joshua, who like is actually also one of the people who streamed like Guilty Gear and I think Blaz Blue back in 2014, and mm-hmm. Brett yeah, even Brett. who yeah he is well Guilty Gear and uh, Gundam. Gundam. He's a Gundam, 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 Gundam. You know, Gundam is his own like like equipment nightmare <laughs> like yeah. i don't know how he does it every year especially oh, with like the the bandai support because like that game setting up three ps4s on like a wi-fi hotspot that, that sounds super dodgy like uh and also remember back in the day just uh you have to have your you have to have your the, the wi-fi connected and it would disconnect mid game because it would lose its connection oh my god mm-hmm. how did, i don't yeah. know how he's able to work on that needs a, your own it person right just for that one turn exactly and, um, setups yeah because like you like for those of y'all who don't know, is that you you know you need one console per like player you know because yeah. it's a team game a 2v2 a big thing uh, that we you know schedule and um manage setups and spaces table space around so we should um, uh... it'll be a really cool thing this year that we have actual control over that you know and then we can a lot of the pain points that we used to have in the past uh will be largely gone this year so i'm really looking forward to that yeah uh but again we will be closing that on may 20th for the first lineup and uh one thing that we're really trying to figure out right now uh we're not a hundred percent certain if we can get it done and uh, we're trying to see if we can maybe secure some consoles and stuff uh, i mean we're not we're probably not going to be getting like super guns or 3dos or some kind of you know like crazy systems like that but you know when it comes down to like ps4s maybe ps3s i don't know um we're trying to see if we can secure some systems just like to have in the side tournament area but we can only probably do that for the games that come in through the first lineup right to get those resources um to so we can have like kind of like a head count of how many systems we'll need and stuff like that but yeah no promises there but that is like one of the benefits of being in the first lineup and also in the past, uh, generally, if you're trying to run a big event, try to be major um, first lineup games, since they are open for signups longer, you get, you generally get more entrance there. You can build more of a vibe, more hype to your tournaments. So um, May 20th, put those that, put that in your calendars, talk to your crews, uh, talk to your streamers, get everybody in to fill in those uh, applications that are at 956pro.com slash volunteer. That would be really appreciated. Yeah. And, um, you know, if, you do, if you're not able to do that, like if, say, you know, you're not sure if you're able to attend EVO just yet and you, you're you not able to get that deadline, that's okay. Um, you know, understood. It happens. Um, we will be having our volunteer forms open for probably, I'll say, like a month later than that, just so we have that second line, of, that second wave of games who, you know, come in a little bit later. Once we do that, after that second wave, though, that's when we close it. That will be our lineup, our finalized lineup for all of the side tournaments at EVO this year. So, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll make another announcement, you know, when the time comes, once we, you know, figure out what our first lineup is, uh, you'll be hearing from us again. But definitely, uh, please try to get those applications in as soon as possible. And uh, every day, we, we get some applications in some from, from some folks. Um, it's, it's been awesome to see some old names return. Some people I haven't seen in a long time at EVO uh, coming through, running stuff. And a lot of new faces, too, kind of like Shib said. People who've really come to their own uh, as a TO during this pandemic era, as online TOs are, you know, stretching their wings out and trying to do something offline at Evo. So it's it's a beautiful thing to see, and I'm really happy to be a part of this. Talk. Yeah, I I want to add because um, we've we've talked a lot about the TO side of things, and maybe if you're not familiar with this stuff, maybe you're not too familiar with where the players come in. So if you're watching this, and uh, you know you've heard the 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 ruminations of mobile suits and puzzles and, you know, other, you know, uh, miscellaneous things showing up at our events. Um, 
then you should expect that once our first lineup close our first lineup application closes around May 20th, we're going to make our first lineup announcement. Uh, registration for the bracket of that first lineup will be open from the announcement forward, right? And then we will take second wave applications. So that is another thing to keep in mind if you're a TO. Uh, get in early so that your players have more time to reg. Uh, because May, the end of May until August is a very, you know, normal timeline for a major, uh, major reg. You know, we're going to have applications open for another month after that so that we can get more people in. But then the reg window becomes a lot smaller, right? And people have to, you know, decide if they're going to be there. And the big thing is just to keep in mind that if you're going to be attending any of these tournaments, uh, you do need to buy your event pass uh, for EVO. So... Head yeah. over to smash.gg slash Evo. You don't have to register for any tournaments. You can just get a weekend pass, right, for Friday and Saturday. If you don't feel like playing any of those games, but you want to play some of our games, trust me, you you will be well served. Uh, and that is kind of one of the things that really becomes part of the value of buying an event pass this year, right? Because you don't necessarily have to have the expectation of going to play one of those nine mainline games. Uh, and that's happened a lot, <laughs> a lot more than I think people would realize. I think a lot more than we realized until we we started looking at numbers, how many people come for it, what we offer, right? What what we're the show that we're putting on exclusively. So don't skip on that. Don't don't uh don't delay. That's really what uh we should just really end on with that. Just don't don't make it take well, any real, longer real quick, than real quick. To. i want to i want to ask something sure sure for the sure. folks that are you know here with me on this podcast what what games do y'all want to see um can i start because uh, i i do have yeah, uh, all right yeah so i want to see fight of animals at e at evo and that sounds like a weird thing to say right because i'm like you know the fight of animals guy look i'm gonna be making this thing happen and i need some people to you know run the people uh, at the bracket. So if you're interested in streaming it, right? If you're interested in running the bracket, I, I need those hands because I will be, I will have my hands in too many, too many bowls, if that makes sense, uh, to, to really like manage that particular bracket. So if you're looking to run like, or even like Fight of Gods, because people come to me all the time. I was like, yo, Fight of Gods, if there were tournaments for Fight of Gods, I'd be playing Fight of Gods. I'm like, yo, run the tournament. All right. So if you're trying to play Fight of Animals, Fight of Gods, please submit ASAP because I want to help you uh, not only by making sure that you get the resources that you need, but also that the tournament is supported by the developers because I guess one of the bullet points is that I do community management for, for digital crafters. So I, if somebody makes it happen, I will back you up big time. Just putting it out there that that's the big one. Uh, other things uh, I already mentioned Gundam wing and let duel. If somebody brings it, I will, absolutely uh, be there for it uh abk uh super super big fan of abk um mvc2 I, I don't know what you know if there's something that evo is going to end up doing with mvc2 but if we get to run an mvc2 tournament then power to it to anyone who can help us organize it uh because i love seeing that game played and um that would def oh and uh you know it seems obvious but uh Multi blood current code, please, please, somebody step up to run current code. We need it, you know. We we definitely need a new guard of people bringing that to offline. Anyway, that was like five games. So somebody yeah, else saves it for the rest <laughs> of good, us. All good. Uh, here, let me go next. So I kind of have a, a similar situation at Shiv to uh, typically I run the vampire save this year. Yeah, I'm gonna be too busy running everything else. So. I've been saying this for years, but this is the year I'm actually saying, like, nah, I literally cannot run the Vampire Savior tournament this year. So, yeah, any any VSAF heads out there, uh, or, you know, even if you're not a VTO, I know uh, us retro TOs, you know, we, we run each other's stuff all the time. Um, hit me up or hit up, you know, hit up the volunteer form, hit me up, whatever, if you have any questions uh, or concerns. Um, I'll do everything I can to help be, help the VSAP tournament happen before the event, but yeah, like I can't run brackets this year or you know do any kind of streaming stuff. So yeah, and uh, VSAP players out there, if you know anybody who, you know might be trying to who might be uh, somebody who could help out, uh, please encourage them to sign up because yeah, I mean VSAP has been has had a tournament at Evo I want to say for at least a decade. 
or not maybe like 15 years. I don't know if it's been at every Evo, but it's pretty close that there's been Dude, a Vampire Savior. I, I feel like the, I've been to like almost every Evo since like 2010. And like the VSAV side tournament has like definitely have a history way before um, it was an anime Evo lineup. So yeah, like there's so yeah. there's so many there's so many people who keeps that legacy up and now we need to go find that new generation of people to pick up the torch yeah i remember yeah. it there in 2010 2011 2012 even before anime Evo was a thing yeah definitely so yeah definitely looking for that should mention marvel 2 i mean i said it before uh you know even though vsav is my main game i i consider myself a marvel 2 player at heart so i'm personally may you know looking for marvel 2 folks as well um got a few prospects but i know they'll need some help too so yeah if you're a marvel 2 lover as i am uh, please sign up to help make that happen because i mean come on it's marvel 2 you can't have evo with all marvel so let's make it happen and i will say for marvel 3 too not sure what angelic's plans are this year generally he's the one who's uh, doing the things for marvel 3 but i know again you know it's there's been a new crowd that has been stepped up and uh kind of taken the torch so uh, really looking forward to see some Marvel at Evo. So what you're saying is we need a new age of heroes. Ah-ha! We're coming in like the handshake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, we need Cyclops and Rue, yeah, to pass off. That was <laughs> that, show. that was not new, the new age of heroes game. But uh, I don't. Yeah, you, man, you can be the Cyclops crazy. or the Ryu in that situation. But yeah. I don't know. Anyone else got any other things they really want to see? Just to put it out yep. there. Florian, what you got? Uh, I would really like for this not to be the first year that we don't run Aquapaza at a live event. Yeah, uh, but true. I don't have time to do that. Dippy don't have time to do that, and nobody's stepped say, up gonna, yet. Uh, so, are you gonna? I was like, we're gonna run it this year, or <laughs> I don't know if Dude, I'm gonna Aquapaza's, have time. Aquapaza's, Aquapaza's kind of tricky now because one is delisted on the it's it's delisted on PSN, PS3. Right on, like, the, those physical yeah. copies are getting pretty pricey. You know, how did I ever expect that my investments all those Aquaposite copies would end up like Bitcoin? I know they're actual stonks <laughs> now because they're like, like, like physical copies of Aquaposite are now going are fetching for like a hundred dollars. JoJo's, I think, is still like that, but it, at least that's getting an HD port. Yeah, yeah. Some of, some of those older games are getting kind of hard to source now. I would also really like to uh, actually a lot of the games that I've always wanted to run at Anime Evo, people have stepped up for. So um, I guess this year the only thing that I haven't seen somebody step up for yet other than that is um Hokuto no Ken. We need to find somebody for Hokuto no Ken for sure. That's like oh, yeah. consistently uh, one of our hypest games. Arcade board or PS2 version? Definitely arcade. Mm-hmm. I see. Uh, I'm talking with some people with that. I did I ran the first one with Kane. Um SoCal SoCal Hokuto no Ken player. Um tr- trying to bring him back in. We'll we'll see if it happens. Um we'll see, but yeah. Sure. Ho- Pokemon okay, we definitely, I mean, you know, setups is always an issue. Whether, yeah. I mean, arcade arcade is ideal. You know, Naomi and stuff, or I mean, a Thomas Way. A Thomas Way, that's the cheaper. Yeah, it's still, it's rough. It's rough to do that. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, whether, if we do have to do it on PS2, I mean, it'd be unfortunate, but it'd be better than nothing, so. I mean, yeah. people already are getting used to the PS2 port just because of, like, Fightcade, right? That's well, Fightcade is the commercial. Thomas Wave. It's very oh, okay. wave, yeah, so sure. yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I was gonna say. I really, uh, when we were talking about games that like kind of flourish in online, HNK was one of those games where people were like, "Oh, I'm finally gonna play HNK." You know, like now that you can play the Atomus Way version on Fightcade, right? They're like, "Oh, I'm finally gonna check this game out." Like, all right, y'all checked it out. Come on down. You know, what did you think? Do do you like it? Right? Like. I, I did, hope did anybody see... learn those those infinites the basketball combos because yeah, i really yeah, want to see yeah, more people me... do that we got to start seeing that see presence you know? balls. i want to see some jab loops right i want to see some fucking toki hand beams oh yeah you see know what <laughs> you know what we should put out there you uh i know y'all cats speaking of online are playing Mega Man battle network these days yo Ooh, if someone amazing. can make it happen i'm just saying it sounds hype all right uh, a battle and network. We do it on the wow. mister. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say, you know, like emulation is perfectly fine too. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since a lot of these games are on 5K, like, if you want to bring a PC and make it happen, like, bet that's that's actually how um Akaski Bliss. Well, Akaski Bliss Conf was run on the the first version, which was a, a PC game only. But yeah, 
I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, you know, we run Melty, so we're we're not any strangers yeah. to having PC games run or emulation games run, too, so... Yeah, yeah we, we have people already looking to run Eternal Fire Zero, which is one of the other games I've always wanted to have run at one of our events, and... Uh, Does that never happen? on PC, too. That no, it's never happened. Not. Wow. Yeah, EFC okay. has never happened at a yeah, we've never had EFC Wow, okay. Online. That's wild. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we need... I've, we I've gotta always fix been that. trying to find somebody to run it, but... That's Only just wild, now that actually. I mean, I, I feel like the the major pain point for like EFZ was the fact that like bef- before the revival patch, it was real rough to get not only the game running but also everyone's controller set up. Well, yeah, yeah th- that's that. There's that. Like when when did revival drop? I legitimately don't know. I want to say like eight two thousand eighteen at this point. Oh. I feel like okay, I've, yeah, that that makes well, a little more sense. Damn. Okay. okay. Yeah, that maybe makes it's a little more been sense. Been out then. for a while now. Yeah, because that game by default doesn't run very well on modern hardware of any sort. Oh, nah. Yeah, no. Okay. Speaking of speaking runs of at games, a very that weird run. frame rate. Speaking, speaking of got. games that were run back in like a back in 2019 on the floor, like a uh, Ultra Fight Dakyanto was run, <laughs> and that's a PC game. What other games were run there? Kyanto Two is also free, so like oh, the the, the barrier of entry is super low. You guys yeah, can totally P- learn how to play that game. But yeah, PC game though, so it's definitely it's definitely more than just Melty Blood that we ran that we were, yeah, ran yeah, on yeah. the floor. I'm just looking yeah, at the, the list of games here. The that... final game that I would really like to see is another Ghost from our past, which is a uh, Fatal Code Codes. Oh, oh, are we actually? Yeah. If we oh, need to actually do it, I know we joke. I know we memed about it in the past, but for it to actually go down, I'd be down to. Dude, that, that's I, an, I've been dude. to so many like like hotel casuals where like people actually booted up like like fate unlimited codes. I'm like, you know what? Maybe we do have an audience for this now. But like when we were first starting off, it was kind of like questionable. But like now now that people have seen fate unlimited codes, like that game is pretty easy to get into. To be honest, are you sure about that? Quite? Are you sure about that? I I mean, <laughs> com- compared to like you know. Finding a physical copy and putting it in your PS2, it's easier. To, it's easier to access. To play, you know, you're gonna have to have that godly TK canceling like execution yeah. down. Hey man, yeah, okay, okay. You know, hey man, there's there's no there's no lack of audience for 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 Fate Unlimited codes. Honestly, I I've had the pleasure of going to like conventions where they have like a free play arcade, right? And there'll be a a, a Fate Unlimited codes cabinet, and it's like. People who have never heard of the game will pack around it, and they'll be like, "Yo, I know these characters. Yo, what is this? Yo, Fate Fate Grand Order has a fighting game. That's, That's crazy. so crazy. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> no, I can, because I mean, a couple of years I was at Magfest. Like they would, like one of the locals would bring their uh, fuckboard. Can I call it fuck on this? Yeah, you can call it the fuckboard. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <FGC. laughs> no, 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 yeah. You call it Unco on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, the Unco board. And yeah, no, there'd be a constant crowd around it. You know, the couple years I was at Magfest, and even though ninety nine percent of people had no idea how to play it, which is its own because the skill ceiling in that game is ridiculous. But yeah, it's a uh, people's like, wait, you the Fate Fighter? What the heck is this? Never, never mind like the random Dojin ones. You know, someone's gonna bust out a copy of like Fate. Was it was Fate that? Escape yeah. or something like that? Fatal Fate Crucius Fake Croxus. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Or, I mean, at uh, minimum, people at least know the saber loop and the ultimate slap combo. That's a, those are dude, slap hard. combos. Are you people playing type Lumina, that's, and that's you know fast. you're you're kind of sad about saber, you know saber's character strength <laughs> in there. Go go ahead and play some fate. You he'll he'll be. I think you'll be pretty happy with where. Yeah, she MBTL up. saber is basically fate limited code saber, but bad. Damn. You hate to see it. <laughs> Dude, to be Another fair, game that has Saber in it, where she's pretty Saber's good. Saber's ever been is either Fate or Limited Codes or maybe even Nitro Plus Blast. Yeah, Nitro, she's pretty good in. Oh, Nitro. Saber's yeah. in Nitro Plus? This is the first I know here yeah. about this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, because <laughs> Nitro Plus was involved with Phase Zero. Don't. Yep. Hey, you know what? I, I'm not going to pretend to know. I want to see some Nitro Plus. Yeah. I want to see some jumping lows in my life. <laughs> oh, we can we can bring. No, we can bring. Uh, we can bring Kazuna Encounter. We got jumping lows in that game, too. Fuck it. We can do that. If somebody, if somebody cares about that game, I don't. I know. I know like five people who play that game, and we all know each other. So if somebody wants to bring like Kazoo Encounter and and knows the jumping low, then have fun. You know, do it by all means. Scam some kids. Damn. And uh, Kumubo, what what games do you think should be uh, at Evo this year? You got anything? I do actually. Uh, well, most of my picks have already been brought up. 
Uh, it's a couple that I'm thinking of that haven't come up yet, so I'll bring them up now. Uh, the big one being a game that got released or remastered last year. Uh, it's been played for about a decade now. It's probably one of the best fighting games nobody plays. Uh, Virtua Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. This is a series that hasn't been at EVO since 2007. Uh, I honestly think EVO legitimately made a mistake not running it in EVO 2012 because there's like a 300-person side tournament for it that was sponsored by Sega. It had more prize money than any other tournament oh, there. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of ridiculous. I'm serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. Uh, I think it was like a $15,000 pot. Oosh. Oh, whoa. Yeesh. 15, yeah. 15000 Yo, that esports money. Man. Yeah, we got, we got several Japanese players to come out for it. It was actually a really great time. And, and actually, yeah, up. come to think of it, um, I know Devil Ray, uh, one of our TOs uh, from the past uh, online events, um, is a huge VF head. Not sure if she'll be able to make it, but I know as soon as we kind of made an announcement that we were doing something, uh, she was already like, you know, she quote tweeted, she's like, all right, yeah, folks, like, let's make this happen, you know, trying to rally the troops, so... And it has been a side tournament even in the past. I think even in 2019, it was run by Made Man and Mike out of Australia, which is kind of a crazy flight. <laughs> Australia to Vegas. Oh, man, it's like, what, 20 hours? Uh, yeah, Mike's been, he, he's been around forever, pretty much, in the VF scene in that part of the world. So I'm pretty confident somebody will end up running it. But no, it's it's a game that I think deserves far more recognition. than it. Which uh, that, year was it where there was the big exhibition with Fudo again? 2012. Yeah, it's been a while then, huh? Yeah. Because that no, was the it's... last like official Evo uh, VF thing. No, that, well, that was like a sponsored thing that they did, but it wasn't an official Evo game, even mm. though it had the numbers of an official Evo game. Like, Yeah, and this was back when they all, they ran even fewer games. Like 2011, they only had five games. 2012, they had six. It's just like... Yeah. Like, people play. I mean, like, you I... know, crazier things have happened. Like, yeah, definitely um, all y'all VF heads out there come through with those volunteer applications. Yeah, it's also already had more support than I expected, you know, like the Tekken DLC, which is hilarious. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, what is it? It's like, uh, huh? Just confusing, but it, it's kind of a cool thing that they're doing that, because that is something I was legitimately never expecting. Uh, the other series, a Namco series that is not Tekken, um... I almost want to segue into Urguys, because that would actually be cool, too. But I think so now. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> Ur- God bless the I, 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 really, I really do enjoy Urguys, but that's, like, never... I don't think I've ever seen that at EVO. It's okay. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, rude. Uh, why are we judging? We let people run anything. Um, so God somebody bless, want to bless see the guys. ring. Yeah, no, but the series, the game I was going to mention actually was Soul Calibur, and I can't even pick which game. Uh, one is actually seeing a resurgence since it's on Fightcade now. Two is probably the one that's had the most competitive play in the past. Three, not the original console version of three, but there's been some crazy people who hacked the arcade balance changes and bug fixes into the PS2 version. So there's a patch oh, version of uh, Soul Calibur. Is that the one where Amy, people is, play is Amy like... good or bad in that one? Because I, I, she was un, she was unfinished. She was like one of the side characters. Yeah, and... yeah. She was like the creative character kind of like default model. Right, but some of those characters are bro- like there's some of them are broken gameplay wise. Yeah, what happened with that is that there's some creative soul characters where it's like the same character as like a stock character, but they're just better. Like yeah. they, they oh. just have better attacks. Like they're the same but better. So that Amy, was a thing. They're... There's two exceptions in that patch. It's Amy and Huang, because they actually got added as characters in Arcade Edition. So those got poor, those moves just got yeah, ported back. Uh, I, I agree with uh, Kumabo on the SC1 thing. I kind of think that, like, the weird thing about Soul Calibur is that, like, everyone plays, like, every version of Soul Calibur, where, like, even people will even, like, show up for five somehow or four if you're, like, really into those. So it's, like... That's not a bad thing. I'm just saying, like, if Soul Calibur comes through this year, it'll probably, you know, Soul Calibur 6, people are already getting together, but what else could there be, right? Like, that could really surprise us. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of, like, not in, like, I, I don't know much about, like, Soul Calibur, but it's, like, Soul Calibur, one of those series where, like, legacy knowledge goes a long way, like, in Tekken. Yes uh, and yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes and no, but I mean, the big part is that like every single one of those is so spaced out. I think in terms of release that like there's like a version that you started playing, right? And like that's that's the one that you really like because like you got into it then, and so you know people have like a lot of acclaim for SC one, right? But like SC two came out on all those different platforms. And so that became the one that people were like really playing. Or like SC3 the came out and game like, in the series and had the most tournaments for it and whatnot. Yeah. 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 Last so, game with an arcade release. Well, SC3 had an arcade release technically. I'd love it, to see it. Soul Calibur 2, man, of all things. Soul <laughs> Calibur 2 has been an arcade. Evo forever. Like yeah. literally going yeah, back to the start yeah, of yeah. Evo. Like it's always been a side yeah. tournament, even when it was after the first couple of years when it was an official tournament. Somebody's always run it. Mm -hmm. That game, like, so have one is hilariously broken. Oh my god, people don't know. Like, unless you've like been in the fight kid pits or you like you know how that game was played way back in the day, like you don't know that game is busted. Can't wait to see why like a, a FGC content creator go through like the history of Soul Calibur because I've seen videos of like the history of like each independent game of Tekken. I feel like but, there like, are like, history for, of Soul for, for games videos. like. Oh really? All right, I'm gonna have to go. Soul Calibur is kind are. of depressing. <laughs> Because, well, especially after the first two games, because like the first, the first Soul Calibur came out on Dreamcast, one of the highest rated games ever in the U.S. The just in terms of like money. ratings, landmark Dreamcast game. Soul Calibur two, most popular game in the series. But then it's like three it was like PlayStation two exclusive and was super buggy and wonky, didn't play all that great, and that gets fixed in arcade edition, but nobody plays arcade edition. Four same story really that game's also in you now hilda just killed everybody it was not good oh yeah i remember that yeah yeah and then that game got improved but only on the psp version which nobody played or the psp version of there's soul a Cal psp version yes uh, soul caliber for broken destiny oh, wow it has kratos in it yeah it's kratos uh, which version soul added the meter system real five quick? Five? Okay, interesting. But the thing is, like, so Calibur 3, 4, 5, and 6, they all they all were rushed, they all were ran way under budget, and it's just kind of, it's kind of sad, like, those games didn't get nah, the bro. attention that they deserve. You don't understand, you don't understand. The, your soul still burns, okay? That's all that matters, mm -hmm. so as long as that's true, you can show up to our event, and you can run your Soul Calibur of choice. Bro, uh, I'm actually interested. Like, if anybody do show up to, like, to, to run a tournament for bro, any of these Soul Calibers, I'm, tef I'm definitely watching. Bro, I need somebody to should bring Soul horizon. Calibur 1 because, like, that game, like, you will shatter the, 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 the perceptions of, like, people who, like, like that game when you t when you show them how you actually play that game. Like, Cervantes, 70% Dread Charge, like, everything yeah. about Killick, like, everything about Killick. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, there's Killick so many legit, le legitimately banned tech. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm telling you, like, like if you show up to okay. like, like that game, like if there is an SC one tournament and like, like people who who maybe thought they knew how about you know how that game works, no, they will they will learn how you actually play SC one. <laughs> that game is broken as hell. I love it. Like moves that track basically have god tier tracking. I love it. It's like so god. -like. It's just ridiculous what a great game what a what a great dreamcast game that is anyway uh moving on actually you know what i i gotta bring up a game for somebody who is not here with us today uh, uh let's see some killer instinct uh you know shout outs to the huddo again i know that's that's his game that's the game he loves that's why you always be seeing that at combo breaker but um definitely want to see some killer instinct uh breakthrough um That'd be awesome. Uh, I know Rick would love to see it. Yeah, I I also want to see KI. Uh, I always talk about like organizing a KI tournament. Uh, but I always remember how stupid deep KI is now with so many characters and so many mechanics that it's like, I I want to commentate KI. I think that'd be a genuinely awesome game to talk about. But I'm just like, oh man, I'd have to put so much work in to really get to that level. To, to even know what to talk about in some of these character matchups. So, like, if you are one of those people who's never quit that game, because I know you're out there, you're probably in the exhibition match queue right now, because you are, I know you are, uh, then 
you you gotta you gotta sign up. You you gotta help us make it happen. Uh, also, uh, saw it talk about it on Twitter, and I agreed with the take is that MKX is in a really nice spot now, and uh, has has like online competition all the time now, right? It kind of starts to see like they're starting to really bring it up. Uh, so and and somebody brought it up that uh, the current version of MKX never saw an Evo. Um, oh, that's right, huh? Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, so I'm like, man, that'd be really cool, you know, to to really give it that showcase because I don't think we've ever, I mean, MKX wouldn't be Didn't the Animevo thing or something. Oh, I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I pretty think sure. that's what happened. Yeah, I remember Injustice being on the Evo on the Evo board at some point. That's yeah, no, yeah, it was. they did MKX, but not never the up the final the updated XL. version. Yeah, yeah, XL. yeah, exactly. Yeah, the yeah, final XL. version was never on Evo stage. Uh, and that was like, yeah, oh, yeah you're game. right. That'd be sick. That, that game's hella fun to watch, too. Um, Shoutouts to the Coliseum. Uh, still running MKX uh, Netplay. Yep. It's really sick, actually. I highly recommend production values on that stream. is great. But yeah, I I don't know. I I guess I've kind of... Uh, you can look at our history results, right, uh, on our site. If you've never checked it out, highly recommend it. If you want to know a little bit about our past, uh, 956.production slash results um you'll see so many titles right and yeah. just and i believe a, like a, a lot of the games that are on there also have links to the actual vods that were recorded for oh them. yeah 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 if if there are vods then we have them up there for the most part mostly the offline and stuff the online stuff is still getting uh, back cataloged from us uh but definitely for the offline stuff um you can see like the vods and you can see who was there and you can see like looking at the roster pages like there's just so much that we we could talk about every single one of them fondly, pretty much. Um, yeah, we we could we could be here. We could list every game that we oh man, we could go on. You can see the games that Goichi was was, was on. Yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see somebody win six side games at once? Want to see them do it again? Was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was definitely a story right there. Oh God! What at one point I want to go through all the Goichi and Koji Cog like Aquapaza rivalry at some point. We should do like the we should do like the player profiles right on the streams mm -hmm. right, but like instead of it being like you know how like on Capcom Pro Tour they'll be like oh they won this premiere and this you know online premiere and this and that it's like oh no this guy he won Kianta this one year and he won like uh, Sam Show the other year. Like just completely unrelated statistics. Like this guy plays these games. Like yeah, that kind of. Bro, thing. I've definitely seen like clips of um. I think it's like the puzzle esports um league in Japan. Like for I'm for I'm a Mia. They they've actually said like Evo champion, like 2017 or something. It's like, yo, that's our tournament. That's not Evo's tournament. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> Evo taking our credit. No, not even. It's just like the the Japanese e leagues just like actually consider like yo, Anime Evo is actually an accomplishment. Or yeah, like the Puyo Puyo esports tournament uh, streams that Sega runs from time to time, like showing it's like oh, this person finished like first or second in the Puyo tournament at Evo 2018. It's like wait a minute, we ran that. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah that's also that. something Thanks. to think about if you, if you guys want to meet some of the the folks from Japan. I don't I don't know what the situation is for for Japanese travel right now um it is in flux yeah but i mean hopefully by evo we will be able to welcome them again and uh if you're running one of those games that has a presence over there you will probably run into them they'll probably yeah. make an effort yeah to evo is like the one of the great things about evo is like there's so many like f like not just japanese but like just foreign like entrants that show up mm -hmm. to um to our tournaments from time to time like there could be someone from like Southeast Asia or like China or uh, even Europe show up to I don't know your Aquapaza tournament and be like, hey, I like we barely see a presence out here in like in Europe, but like at Evo, all those little minute like you know player bases can congregate into like a actual decent bracket size. It's actually kind of cool. Like you yeah. know how that, that, that's uh, definitely one of the things that makes Evo um you know stand yeah, Evo in general is that yeah is that. The international uh, competition there is insane. There's no other tournament that is like that, so it, it's really cool. Um, yeah, like what, when people like uh, Arslan Ass came out and uh, showed like that Pakistan was like real big in Tekken, or like when Gamer B came out and just completely eliminated Justin Wong, and like the entire hotel just blew up. 
Yeah. Stuff like that happens in the side tournaments too. It's pretty wild, actually. It's, I also yeah. like when, uh, like when companies themselves or companies like either indies or even the big guys are just surprised the the games that we run. Yeah, yeah. even even supported to a sense. Like uh, a couple a couple that I have in mind is, uh, well, find them animal find them animals for one. I remember that was like that was supported. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you even got a t a t shirt. Another Dude, one. That... I the one I remember the most is like wind jammers. Like the, like that tournament every oh, year is one yeah. of our biggest like events, and it sees it sees like so many different people from like from overseas come up like come out to Evo just for wind jammers. And there's like even some yeah. high profile names like uh, prominent wrestlers, uh, Kenny Omega and Xavier Wood show up to some of our events. That that was actually kind of trippy. Okay, I yeah, also love I mean, the nod. jammers too happening too, so. Jeez. It'll be really interesting what happens this year. Yeah, I also like the nods in the past of like Chaos Code, like uh, and I think it was I forget which year off the top of my head, but I remember the Chaos Code, the people uh, actually posted the top three on their on their Twitter channel. That was pretty awesome. Oh yeah, and also Kion and also Kianta, <laughs> it's like totally surprised of of what's happening over here and showing his support. Yeah, Kanta Evo popping off so hard, they ended up putting Van into what was they announced rollback at the end of that tournament. They're doing rollback support, and the game does actually have it now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so we got a prize yeah, I mean, about companies. We definitely flexing a little bit over here, but um, yeah, you know, we we've worked with um a lot of uh, publishers, developers, and stuff to host tournaments and stuff. And um, I'm not sure what the plan is this year quite yet. Yeah, it's still um, kind of early I, for like dev support, but like once things start panning out, especially after Combo Breaker, then like mm -hmm. we sh we should be probably talking to all the companies that we've worked with before, see what their plans is for Evo. Yeah, because I know there's definitely a few games that are newer or maybe not even out yet that uh, did not make it into the Evo lineup that I'm sure people um, are gonna want to play. So again put in those volunteer forms you know let let's show them that these games have a community uh that is you know burgeoning growing you know exploding um, yeah let's go and phantom them, breaker a good show yo right yeah let's go phantom breaker yeah i mean sure also um i guess in the vein of that uh we've been talking a lot about like eastern indie stuff uh i know there's been a lot of western indie in the past few years stuff made out of Europe or in the U S or in South America that have shown up mm -hmm. like literally they, they just get played online like over Parsec or with the game's net code or stuff like, let's make that stuff show up offline. Like, please, there's a certain, you know, nostalgia for us and in, in seeing like these indie, you know, anime games come back. But like, if you're the guy who plays like Murphite, if you're the guy who plays, you know, Schwarzer Blitz, like Heatwave, um, and so many others that I just cannot name because there's literally so many of them now. Yeah. There's just it's the just like they fighters. exploded like in the past two years. People started working on these Western fighting game projects. It's like I don't think people really realize that how many people are, are developing fighting games now in in the West. That it's like if you're part of that fan base, literally, you're probably one of the very few people who can step up to elevate it to have that offline presence. So, please, I would like to see one of these new games uh, come through and have a cool tournament and really put themselves out there. Because, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, who's who's making games out here in the West, right? Uh, now the ARC's making all these things. So, pfft. I'd love to see it. Yeah. yeah, man. And even if you're a small scene, like like even if you only have like sixteen like sixteen people at the Discord, bring him to Evo and show off like the crazy high level gameplay that you have on there, and just like impress the world. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think um, we've we've gone on sufficiently regarding our vortex plan. So I will just remind everybody to please sign up. Deadline is going to be May. 20th the next episode of this podcast will be after the cutoff so if you are looking for reminders don't look at our youtube channel look at our twitter that's going to be at 956 productions we're going to be uh yelling at y'all periodically to get your signups in so we can help y'all and uh, make the best possible tournament happen uh now uh we should talk about point number three which is going to be the uh our, our online plans now 
this is a topic that we're having because I think a lot of people and I and I actually address some of this stuff out there on Twitter is a lot of people have like this perception I guess that you know we're we're doing the uh, the 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 offline thing again we're going back to what we used to do so naturally there's not really much of a reason for us to do anything else that whole online thing you know it's just a stint it's no longer useful or convenient or whatever it's like no <laughs> no. No, no, no 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 uh first of all our messaging has been oh yeah we're doing online again you know we're absolutely going to bring it back we're we're already thinking about it and today we're here to prove that um so let's just say i guess first off that uh online events under 956 have been really positively received uh in the community and i'm really grateful for that including myself right because i i got acquainted with the group here through doing online events through vortex gallery uh well through animevo online uh particularly but then then through through vortex gallery we continued working um and we're not gonna stop doing that because if you had to ask my opinion on the matter is that the the genie is out of the bottle now on like the idea of like a net play major is what people were kind of talking about it as but just like this you know just more generally this idea of like a big online event for fighting games like that is just like we're we're in that spot now where this kind of stuff can happen and we can start building better presentation for that kind of event right um yeah I, definitely we watched a lot of we saw a lot of really cool tournaments a lot of really successful brackets a lot of really nice highlights of smaller games and you know going to evo is expensive going to any major is expensive so we would like to continue doing that um I guess before I kind of go on with how we plan to expand our presence, I mean, does anyone here have any reflections on the past two years of online events that we've done? I mean, I, I love what we've been doing these past few years, you know, with Vortex Gallery online um, and previously Anime Evo online. You know, we talk about how international Evo is, you know, in person, but these online events, man, like we've come, you know, we, we've really gotten in touch, especially with like um, Southeast Asia, uh, South America, you know, Bo Blaze, right? Like, Bo Blaze is Bo from, Blaze. yeah, man, is from, um, you know, our online tournaments for BBCF. And it's just been so cool, like, uh, seeing the diversity of not only of um, people, but also of games, too. Like, um, you, you know, there's a lot of games that, you know, might have a really huge online scene, but not so much offline let's see like jojo's comes to mind heritage for the future crazy online scene but um offline because it's on cps3 not so much so it, it's just been really awesome and yeah definitely during this summer you know we are running our in-person we're back to running our in-person again like don't get it twisted like we have, we're not forgetting y'all who love the online events and we will be doing that again the whole experience of watching an online event like that, right? Like our approach to, to Animevo and to Vortex Gallery in an online format was to deliver several weekends, right? Because we just had so many games and there was not really a reason for us to deny those games because we just wanted to see how it would go, right? We just wanted to schedule everybody. Not everyone's going to watch the same games. Maybe everyone just wants to see their favorites. So we just had no reason to you know limit ourselves and just to offer the entire range of everything that we could put out there uh and just to let people decide right and, and that is cool but one of the things that that we care about is offering a coherent viewing experience right so it's like if you're going to organize things at such a high level then you know the way that you watch it at home or, or you compete should be very easy to understand, right? Just like at you know at an at an offline, like you you show up, you know, you do your admission, you you check in, you sit down, you run your bracket. If you're gonna be watching, you you know you find a spectator pass and you you show up, right? Like that stuff is cool. And with online, it becomes a little more maybe a little more complicated, right? You gotta find the right stream. You gotta you know if you're gonna donate to the crowd fund, you gotta go find the crowd fund link. If you're gonna check the bracket you know you need that exclamation point bracket all that stuff uh, that that stuff is still you know uh, relatively applicable to offline because of all the tech that's out there but 
taking part in a large online event is is very fragmented right like it's just a lot of moving parts that that work together and so we had this idea of offering like a central viewing experience right like one place that if we're running an event and you know you're sitting at home you want to have an experience that everyone else who's watching it can join in on uh we wanted to offer something something experimental something different don't think that we're not thinking about online all the time because our next episode of this very podcast that's going to be out on the 22nd it's going to be going over something that we're working on and here's a photo of it right now that you have on the screen uh this is different right you guys can see this um line of cabinets here in the back this these posters on the wall what is this right well uh, we have been working with the creators of the Evo Stadium from VR Chat that was launched in 2020, if any of you remember that. We've been working on them on a new project. It's going to be what we're calling a digital venue. And what that is, is basically a place where you can watch our shows, right? Our, our events, our exhibitions, any kinds of broadcasts where you can watch them with other people in this VR setting, right? We have a lot of people here on the staff who are really interested in VR. And there's been a general trend towards this kind of experiences of like real time kind of everyone in the same room experiences, even though it's it's online. So you guys can see like these photos here. We're looking to build a, a place, right? That represents the quality of online events that we run and that's going to be through this this venue and um i really look forward to giving you guys a guided tour of it and also kind of sh showcasing some of the benefits that it offers some of the neat things that are only possible in this sort of medium of, of virtual reality games right and just to kind of tie it all in together with the general viewing experience of an online event this is something experimental, but special, right? Something that we've definitely, we've heard talked about. We've seen things kind of like it, but we've never seen anyone really pursue this. So I want to see people really come through and take part in the experience that we're building here. But first we need to introduce it to you. And that's going to be the subject of our next episode. And we're going to be there basically myself chikzama corin and uh numaki we're gonna meet the creators to do kind of some interviews and some q a and really give you guys a very special experience so i guess heads up that episode is not going to be on uh audio only streaming platforms because we actually do have some special video content uh available and also it's just to give you guys a, a visual of what we're working on because uh, it's really close to being done. And this has been something that we've been working on for months now. So really happy that we are finally getting towards completion. And um, we're going to have an info page on it on our official website very soon. So look forward to it. I don't know if you guys have any particular thoughts on this project. I know that a couple of you have been waiting just to be surprised by by this. But I guess if you're not familiar with like the idea, like like what do you guys think? Like what Where do you think this could go? I don't know, mate. Can we run like matches in VR while watching them in VR? Oh yeah. So it, the technology is basically just to load video, li live video content into the venue, and so we have a large video wall that we're working on, uh, and we're actually just able, like I've seen it in other spaces, and and we can do it here as well, where players will connect and have a broadcast of the match and just pipe it out to the video wall and it can just be like a live event thing right so that kind of thing will be possible with what we're building here but i also would expect people to look forward to being able to watch our live content like the next edition of our online event right or any online exhibitions that we do or our offline event this summer it's definitely going to be ready by then then you'll have an ability to kind of be part of the experience anywhere in the world that that's really the the part that we wanted to land yeah i do remember i do remember back in 2020 before evo there was actually like a recreation of the bandelay bay <laughs> that was pretty amazing that was yeah that was yeah released back in the day i mean so that kind of thing awesome. that kind of thing was awesome and i think it's like it really opens up the ability for people to really experience this stuff in a way that they otherwise wouldn't our approach to this project has been 
to kind of decouple it from any particular event and just be part of the the community that we represent that transcends you know evo or the online space just that whole mix that we have we will be able to use it all the time and really engage with people at every time every every time of the year that we want to do an event so you know when when it's live it's going to be already really interesting and then down the line when we start up the you know announcing different plans and having more information out there you guys can expect it to be updated into the world and so that when you join it and and you take a look around you'll have that information there on site quote unquote right so that's you know not stuff that you'd normally be able to say about online events and uh really looking forward to building on that i yeah, guess i'm looking forward to seeing it yeah that, that i know Corian, you haven't seen it yet and uh so we're going to have even more to say about that once we do the reveal. So step in, join the world, find all the information, and also just to have it there live in front of you. You don't have to go look for it. It's just there. You know, if we're streaming an event, you're going to be able to watch it there. If other people are there, you can meet them. You can watch it with them. You can have that live viewing experience. So this kind of thing is our attempt at doing something different for online events, right? And I think that's really necessary because we did like these past two years, right? Awesome thing, you know, growing every year, you know, more regions getting involved, more games getting involved, new, new net play tech getting invented so that we can run these events. But like, I really look forward to making that case when we, we do the full, full guided tour. You guys should really watch the next episode of the TO desk because it's going to be uh, definitely our, our most complicated episode yet. And our most kind of, content pack thing that we've done so far it's gonna be wild it's gonna be wild so i guess we can really kind of wrap it up here and just remind people that you should get involved right if you like watching our show if you like what we do we would not be able to do it without the volunteers who make it happen i don't know what else if, if you don't like what we do come on and show us how it's done yeah yeah come on out you think you think we're so whack you know just come on out show us how it's done give us Give us the the class act. You know what I'm saying? I'd be interested in pointers as well. You know, there's yeah. always room to improve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess let's let's just remember the points, right? First lineup, volunteer applications end on May 20th. Don't forget, sign up. That's going to be 956pro.com slash volunteer. Links will be in the descriptions of the platform that you are watching this on. And um, we will have... Uh, every player will be required to buy an event pass. So if you're even thinking about it, just, just do it now, right? Just you can get it done. doesn't matter, you know, how late you plan to submit your application. You can at least buy the tickets right now. And um, start hitting up your communities. Like, if you haven't had the conversation yet, then absolutely just go out there and be like, hey, you know, are any of you in the area? Any of you going to Evo? Should we, you know, take a day to run this thing? I mean, if you're going to run a small bracket, right, like just a couple of setups, it's not going to take too long out of your day, right? So absolutely uh, reach out far and wide. So all that said, thank you guys for tuning into another episode. Please look forward to even more content on the way. And uh, that's going to be it from us. We're going to be signing off. Peace out, y'all. See you. Laters. Peace.